Issue 237. We start out seeing Knuckles on camera footage in front of Amy and the Chaotix and Kintobor, and he says he's at the Syndicate's control room and asks Kintobor what to do. Kintobor tells him to plug the handheld unit of him in so that it could interface with the carrier and take control of it. Vector says Sonic must have done something because the Chaos Energy is feeding back onto the Death Carrier and tearing it apart. Knuckles wants Kintobor to get the emeralds back, and Kentibor says that won't be such a problem, as according to the data he's reading, Shadow is patrolling the ship outside and Bruce has disappeared completely. The red echidna that was working with Zachary says that now that Zachary's plan is over, his debt to him for freeing him from prison is fulfilled. In a wham moment, he shoots him with a laser saying that he doesn't need his help for this one, and some emeralds fly around him as his eyes glow. He says that this shell was useful 8,000 years ago, back in Tikal's time. But the God of Death doesn't need to cower any longer, and he shall finally be free thanks to the Emerald. Th that's much more interesting. I'm finally actually interested in this character. Knuckles shows up too late, and Shadow says the engines are beyond repair, so we'll have to abandon the ship. Then he sees Sonic returning through a warp ring, and Sonic snarks, well obviously, making me giggle at him lampshading the Captain Obvious sentence. Sonic taunts Shadow that he'll need to recharge himself before too long because he's made of chaos energy. That is very astute, he must have figured that out from his experience with Super Sonic, who is also a being of chaos energy. Shadow leaves, with Sonic following him because he'll lead him right to the Emeralds. He runs after Shadow until Shadow starts to use chaos control, and Sonic says it's too slippery to stop and falls. Then, because he was put in a desperate situation, the story ends with him threatening Shadow as Super Sonic calling him a striped freak, letting out his inner hatred for him. Obviously, I'm skipping the Shenmue story because I don't care about it. I encourage you to go read it for yourself. It deserves a review from someone who gives a shit. Now for the next story. Shortbu, saying that he never robbed the bank, presses a button on his belt to transform back into his Shortbu's armor. We see a civilian doubting that any heroes can be trusted anymore. They are really quick to doubt that. Shortfuse then calls out Techno on locking him in as if he's guilty, and they go over to a building where someone cowers in fear in fake Shortfuse armor, insisting that he didn't need to do anything wrong. Obvious lie there, unless this is a completely new, innocent person. Shortfuse then impulsively tells Techno off for mistaking him for someone else, and flies away, leaving her alone with someone who, for all he knows, is really lying to get him to leave and will attack Techno. I mean, I totally understand why he'd be angry at Techno for just assuming he's guilty. But still, it turns out he really is innocent, or she, I get the feeling it's a she. And it turns out someone else entirely is the one responsible for abducting civilians. This issue is by Ed Reynolds. In the first story, it turns out that the God of Death was- In the first story, it turns out that the God of Death was using the Echidna working with Zachary as a vessel and escapes from his body to carry out his plan. Which is pretty surprising for me to type about in a Sonic comic. I don't know why, weirder things have happened. It's interesting and pretty surprising. And then Sonic falls off the Death Carrier and turns Super to save himself. Which puts a need to recharge Shadow in a lot of danger. So does this count as a Sonic Adventure adaptation? I mean, like, partially a Sonic Adventure adaptation? Because we never actually saw the Egg Carrier in the... in the official Sonic Adventure adaptation. The final story was about Short Fuse, due to his short temper, getting angry with Techno for locking him in when he's mistaken for an imposter, and he flies away from someone in Cybernet armor that could have killed Techno after he did that. 